Hey guys, Josh here with another video. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at the next generation of graphics cards and also the current generation, but the next gen of the current gen, however you want to look at it. We'll take a look at some leaks on the 3070 Ti and 3080 Ti, as well as RDNA 3, so the next generation of Radeon graphics cards from AMD, as well as the Intel dedicated graphics cards for gaming or their XE HPG graphics card. So just kind of taking a look at all of these cards and when they're supposed to release, how do we expect the stock of these cards to really play out, especially with how we've seen RTX 3000 and RDNA 2 cards just not be available whatsoever, whether you're entering a Newegg shuffle or you're just randomly stumbling on a card on Amazon or Best Buy, uh, it's super, super hard to get your hands on these cards. So what are we really expecting for this next generation? Now to start things off with the super high demand for these current generation cards, we shouldn't see as big of a demand, hopefully next year. We still might see, of course, some new market penetration, more people getting into PC gaming, more people finally having the availability, the money to upgrade to a newer card. And these cards are supposed to be really impressive when it comes to performance. So let's just kind of take a look back in time when Nvidia first announced that they were going to be using Samsung as their new manufacturer for RTX 3000. So that was about five months ago when this article came out and it was big news. Nvidia was switching over from TSMC to Samsung's eight nanometer process. So the, the story here is NVIDIA might beat out AMD in GPU stock thanks to new Samsung deal. And we've obviously seen how that has played out. All the semiconductor uh, manufacturers are extremely stretched, shortages everywhere. So obviously this didn't age super well. Uh, Samsung hasn't been able to deliver just as TSMC hasn't been able to deliver. They just don't have the capacity to meet the demand. So what does that mean moving forward for both TSMC and Samsung manufacturing cards for AMD and Nvidia. So taking a look at the next generation of AMD cards, so RDNA 3, these things are looking really impressive. So according to some leaks, the RDNA 3 GPU architecture, which will be built on RDNA 2, which makes up you know 6800 XT, the 6900 XT, uh, will be around three times the performance level as the current generation. So we're expecting the Navi 33 to be equal to a Navi 21 GPU, which is currently an RX 6900 XT. So what is a Navi 33? So that would be equivalent to this generation's RX 6600 or 6600 XT, but it will probably be around the price point of like an RTX 3060 or 3060 Ti. So right now, AMD is positioned with the 6900 XT going against the 3090, the 6800 XT going against the 3080, the 6700 XT and 6800 going against the 3070, and then it would be the 6600 XT to go up against the 3060 and the 3060 Ti. So think about a 3060 or an RX 6600 XT level card having the performance of a 6900 XT or 4K gaming performance at over 60 FPS. That is just insane. So it could be possible that we'll see a 6900 XT level performance card at a price point of $500. So this could really, really increase the demand for these cards, uh, the low price point, what we saw with RTX 3000 at the beginning, and super, super huge performance jumps. So we saw extremely high demand this year, and I'm sure it will continue next year with the next generation of AMD cards. And that is the same for Nvidia's next gen cards as well. So we are expecting the RTX 4080, the 4070, next gen RTX to launch most likely in September of 2022, if Nvidia sticks to their typical timeline of around that September 20th release date every two years. Um, there hasn't been as much news yet on what Ampere Next, which is next generation Ampere, is going to be like performance wise, but we're definitely going to expect performance increases. Just not sure how they will stack up against AMD's almost three times performance jump uh, in that category. But that's looking at the middle to end of 2022. What about the end of this year? And that's where we really have to take a look at Intel and their expected dedicated graphics cards for gamers or the XE HPG or the DG2. There's a lot of different code names for this thing, but it's expected to launch honestly pretty soon, uh, probably towards the end of 2021. And there's an article right here 
DG2 is right around the corner, but it's still slightly unclear as to whether Intel will manufacture these DG2 uh, chips on their own, using their own manufacturing process as they do today with all of their CPUs, or if they will outsource some of the production to TSMC. We know they will be outsourcing some of the production. Uh, it seems as though that won't happen until 2023 when they will somewhat, when they will slowly start to outsource uh, some of their capacity to TSMC uh, as TSMC is just more advanced at this point in time in their manufacturing processes. Uh, Intel will, while still struggling to hit, you know, 10 nanometer and seven nanometer uh, production, TSMC is already working on five nanometer and three nanometer production uh, on their, uh, at their manufacturing sites. Uh, so Intel doesn't really have a choice to start to outsource some of this capacity to the likes of a TSMC. But if they do start to outsource these gaming graphics cards to TSMC this year with the expected release of the DG2, then what happens to the stock of current GPUs that are already on the market being produced by TSMC and what happens to just the overall availability of Intel graphics cards when they launch. And the DG2 is expected to be around an RTX 3070 or 3080 level of performance. Uh, and this will be Intel's first foray in a long, long time into the dedicated graphics card space. Uh, and they're achieving honestly pretty good performance, RTX 3070, 3080 uh, levels for their first card. So that would be pretty incredible if they were able to actually meet those expectations. But what does this mean for current stock issues and how that will play out the rest of the year? So we've already heard from plenty of top executives at manufacturing companies, at semiconductor companies, that these shortages aren't going to end for whether it's a year or two years. They're definitely not gonna end this year. And Intel's cards are supposed to be uh, manufactured by TSMC, which is also manufacturing Apple chips and AMD chips and all these other chips. So once Intel comes into the fold and they're expected to produce cards and chips for Intel, and of course it takes away capacity, at least somewhat from other customers, including AMD. So we probably won't see amazing stock of either Intel or continued poor stock of AMD. So that really covers, you know, the AMD Intel side of things. And Nvidia of course is still struggling as well to output cards. However, they're still considering the release of the RTX 3070 Ti and 3080 Ti, which should see some really nice performance jumps. The 3080 Ti getting closer to that 3090 and the 3070 Ti closer to the 3080. Um, and those are expected to release at the beginning of June. So although we have these shortages of the current cards, they're still releasing new cards, whether it was the 3060 and the 3060 Ti, and now the 3070 Ti and the 3080 Ti. Nvidia just keeps releasing cards and still no availability uh, or wide availability to really back up those releases. So I wouldn't be too hopeful about getting your hands on some of these close releases, whether they be from Intel or Nvidia, but what happens in 2022 with AMD, RDNA 3, and Nvidia Ampere Next, will we finally see stock of these cards at the end of 2022? And does that mean you should stop looking for a card right now? I mean, if you can wait the year, year and a half, until these next generation of cards launch, we should be looking at two to three times the performance increase at a similar price point as what you're paying for today, possibly even less a year and a year and a half down the line. I mean, Current cards, the launch prices were much lower than what they are now with all the tariffs and just increased prices due to demand. So hopefully at that point, these companies have uh, forecasted for this increased demand and they have capacity available at their manufacturers to produce more cards. So it's definitely not looking great for gamers in the near term, but long term expect some amazing new cards and hopefully supplies to back those cards up. So what do you guys think? If you could get your hands on a 3080 today, would you buy it or would you wait for the 3080 Ti? Or would you wait even further along for a 4080 or an RX 7800 XT? Uh, let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, definitely get subscribed to the channel, turn on post notifications so you can stay up to date with all my latest videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one.